Welcome to Rebuilding with Shelley Armado, a show dedicated to showcasing strong and resilient leaders and individuals from all walks of life. Join us as we explore inspiring stories from all around the world. Here's your host, Shelley Armado. Welcome back. This is Shelley Armado. I'm the CEO and founder and co-founder of My Smart Plans, radically transforming the construction industry. But my addiction is like courage. I am addicted to courage. I love hearing stories of courage and I believe our world will be changed when people come out and share their stories of courage because it takes a lot of courage even to use our system takes a lot of courage to have transparency in a world that's never been designed for transparency in the construction world. So Wayne is my guest today. Uh, He is with Secretariat, which I mean, okay, Wayne, this is, this is such a crazy kind of, not a coincidence, but I don't know. So I flew down to Dallas yesterday for the show and uh, the founder, his name's Jeff Coley. And he said, you know, who's your guest tomorrow? I'm like, Wayne, he's with a company called Secretariat. and, And Jeff was like, Secretariat. I'm like, yeah. He takes me in his office. He has a sign. He has the sign goggles from the jockey from sec- Secretariat. Oh wow! He has right. a signed well, picture on his wall. He said it's so inspirational for me, he, Secretariat. And so he showed me that in the video, whenever Secretariat won his final, um, the gold crown, the goal is it called the triple crown? Um, and he didn't look back, and he was going so fast. And then he said he turned around, and he was like, um, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to win. So metaphor for life, right? Like, don't look back. It doesn't matter. And then when you do, just be not alarmed that people are so far behind you because you're willing, right? Being an overachiever is a good thing. So I met you, was it, when did we meet in Orlando? Was it a month ago? Right. We met at the super conference uh, in Orlando in early December. And you and I were in the lobby and uh, we just started chatting and you described your the product you, the service you provide. And I've been in the business for 40 years in various roles. And it's because I deal with a lot of documents and a lot of data searches. And frequently it's a real arduous exercise to get documents, especially if you're in a dispute kind of environment where the documents are carefully curated. You never know if you're getting everything or if you're getting the latest or if the documents are real you just don't know you just get documents and um what what you offered was a refreshing change because it can often take weeks sometimes months to get documents from various parties at a construction project and having an integrated centralized service I think is a great idea, assuming everyone buys into it, right? And maybe the way that's done is through some kind of contractually specified requirement. Yeah. If you're going to participate on the contract or the project, this is what you do. Right? Yeah. Well, you know what? So describing what you experience on the potential uh, pre-litigation, our, our passion was Can the subcontractors have the right information so they can make great decisions to do their job? And then this will change everything. So when we developed it, we developed it with the idea of the subcontractors. But like we were talking before uh, we started recording about football, um, it's like like the game of football. I mean, you've got a plan, but then everyone has to execute their plan and everyone has to be on the same field with the same ball. And the referees are you. You're the referee. You're like foul. Wait a second. Right. Right. We were on a call. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, that's true. Um, But I think it's it's there are kind of. I mean, there are some advantages, and there are some disadvantages. And I think the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages. A part of the disadvantages kind of deal with human behavior. And those are kind of difficult barriers to overcome. And what, here's what I mean by that, is that in theory, you know, on a construction project, they're long, they're complicated, thousands, tens of thousands of documents, right? And different types of documents, different sizes of documents. Um, they're, it's, it's, a, it's a very unusual profession when you think about it, because, um, you know, most most professions deal with eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, right? 
And for us, yeah, we deal with those, but more often than not, we don't, right? We deal with all sorts of sizes and formats and hieroglyphic type of um, messaging on some of these drawings, right? If you're not a if you're not a designer or a contractor, many people can't even read these documents. So one of the issues is just getting all these documents in a central location is a really big effort. And it takes constant curating to make sure that there's continuous uploading by everyone involved into this centralized system. Because if, if you have one entity sort of slack off or not participate, then it kind of undermines everything, right? If you know that there's supposed to be 10 or 12 participants and two are consistently late or not cooperative, then it kind of defeats the purpose of the whole thing because you need the complete record. If you don't have a complete record, then what's the bog, what, what's the point, right? It's so that's one issue is overcoming that barrier of participation and cooperation and and having everyone understand that it's to their mutual benefit to have this, right? To create this. So that's number one. The other thing too is at the end of the product uh, project, when there are going to be disputes or claims, right? When the when the management and the lawyers start getting involved. There's the issues about, well, how much do we really want to put on the system, right? Because there may be a known problem or a suspicion that there's an issue. And then you get kind of a, you're not sure if you're getting all of the data. And then even if you do get the data, when there's a subsequent request for information, how do we know that all the data will be transferred to the appropriate parties. So I think it's a huge benefit. I think that the smart plan concept by an independent third party is a br is brilliant, all right? It, it, it saves so much time, energy, money. It creates a sense of trust. But I think there are some, some issues that I think are normal, right, to overcome. And I'm not saying they can't be overcome. It's just that in my experience, that's kind of how um, some of the systemic potential barriers might be to kind of a centralized process. Yeah, so something interesting, um, being on the outside of the veil that you've been for all these years and, and everything you're describing is 100% right. But after we tore the veil from Dominic's perspective as a subcontractor and saw what was really going on, it has been so alarming because it's like finding a needle in a needle stack. But with us, we already have identified where the needle is because like right now we're managing mm -hmm. a, a large airport project. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing on this project is different than any other project we've ever done. We're actually pulling all the data out of their system, which is called Kahua. We're pulling all their data out. We're organizing it, information governance, keeping, we're auditing all the meeting minutes, all the agendas. I mean, you name it. Well, mm -hmm. what we found was they have done three data dumps that no one would ever be able to find. Mm -hmm. So we have all that data. So what's been interesting is the, the model now is to hire an owner's rep. Well, we've got an owner's rep. You know, the owner's rep is also in the game of change orders because they're gunning for your contingency from day one. They're not an owner's rep. They are a rep of the change order. They're just another layer that tries to give the owner the sense of, well, you know, they've done this before. Maybe they'll protect us. So right. we've disrupted that, too, because, excuse me, what we found out is this large airport project, the owner's rep is mad that we're coming back and doing document requests because we're saying, why did you remove uh, whatever the document is from your system? And because we're always auditing, like we're auditing 24 hours a day. And so it has been so amazing. I, I mean, again, I go back to the football thing. Like there has to be someone that is calling the plays and they have to know that everyone that has the play has the complete play, right? right. And, and Patrick Mahomes has got the, 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 um, the Waffle House, I laugh because it looks like a Waffle House menu to me, on his arm, you know, two eggs and sausage. Oh yeah, you want your oh, Waffle Soft. 
So right. he's got the play. He comes in, he calls the play. Everybody in the team's like, got it. Doesn't mean that there isn't going to be someone, something happen on the other side that disrupts that play, but everyone knew what the play was. That's really what my smart plans is. It's the playbook. And doesn't mean that there's not going to be challenges, but it means the challenges are going to be mitigated like that. Like one right. of our largest projects. No, no, it's not largest anymore. One of our large projects, the engineering firm underbid the CFM. So they were a part of the team that was allowed to tell us what to do because we we like to have the owners tell us what to do, you know, as far as on behalf of the project. Doesn't mean that we don't have input, but anyway, this they just went in and changed the contract. Literally. It was ten million dollars. Mm-hmm. And the owner said, hey, I need this file, blah, blah. And, and I mean, we're not the masters of the knowledge. We're the masters of the organization. So like in five minutes we had it, he said, I would have given you a million dollars for that. We're like, uh-uh, mm-hmm. we undercharged. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, I, information really is power. And I think the, the, the great thing about the centralized system that you feature is that it is organized. It's complete. And when there's a need, it can be easily retrieved. And the the time savings alone, right, is is enormous. But I think also the sense of objectivity, right, the the neutrality, the fairness, right. I, I think that's very important. And um, you know, it's one. It's a when you're in the project, you need assurance that you're dealing with people who are above board and are treating you fairly, right? And I think that that service does that well. I do come back though to the, you know, and this is kind of the systemic issue with human behavior is when there becomes an issue, a claim, or when parties start not to like each other, and that can happen a lot on a construction site, as you know, right? Then people start to withhold information. And what I'm thinking in particular are internal communications, right? Where um, issues are starting to percolate and um, we're trying to get to the root cause of things. And I, and I'm, and by the way, this is a, this is an issue whether or not there's a centralized repository of documents, right? This is just part yeah. of the beast of disputes. It's how do you know? How do you know? How do you get to the root cause of a problem to, to solve it, right? And that's what I, right? That's now what I do. I, I help solve disputes. And we're always trying to get to the root cause to just find out exactly where it started. And it would be wonderful if people would share that kind of data and put it into some kind of repository, I just don't know how, I mean, I'd be interested to know if you, when you, I'm sure you deal with projects that have disputes or are in dispute or have claims, right? I'd be interested to know how you kind of um, bucket those. If there, if those kind of problem issues are, identified, if you put them in separate folders or repositories, or if you keep them in a lockbox, for example, because you know they're kind of sensitive. Yeah. I mean, I, I would love to know if, uh, you know, what you do in those kinds of circumstances, if anything different from your routine kind of, um, you know, um, centralizing. So we do have a solution for that. So we have email archive. So each project has its own email that goes with the project. So every email or every correspondence is recorded, date, time stamped, so that we have that. But you know what's really interesting? We've done about, I don't know, 1,500 projects. We've only had one that went to litigation. One. Doesn't mean there hasn't no. been disputes, but one. And, and I mean, it's just because now information is so readily available. And with the forensics of who, what, when, and where, knowing who's been on the dashboard, what time they were on the dashboard, they can't say to you, oh, well, you know, I, I mean, I blah, blah, blah on the dashboard and I didn't whatever, because unless their name is date, date and time stamped on the dashboard, they weren't on the dashboard. So we have, we have corralled, mm. we've corralled these people. <laughs> I mean, literally, it's great. I mean, I think that that's fabulous. And maybe in and of itself, the fact that you've only had one going to litigation, it might be demonstration 
that your product is the reason why there is lower rates of litigation. I'm not sure if lawyers would love you for that, but I know that owners would love you for that. And probably, is, um, you, you know, all the people who have to write the checks to the lawyers for yeah, the litigation or services. The discovery. Right? I mean, I think that that's a, I think that's a t- testament in and of itself, Shelley, frankly, that only one of your, what you said, 1,500? Yeah. That's remarkable. Well, but the, right? and the I mean, one that went to litigation, this is the thing that's interesting. Uh, the city mandated us, the general contractor, we went and we do all the training. I mean, we're like hands on. We're not just like every other te- technology company that you call and, you know, you get a voicemail. Please push one to talk to Shelly. She'll never call you back. I mean, we have a one ring phone policy. We answer the phone. We solve the problem. That's how we roll. There is no other description of our company. Like answer the phone, solve the problem. Nobody's calling to be our friend. So this particular project, we went in, we did the training. There was like 15 people there from the general contractor. And they said to us, we've been in business for 45 years. Why would we need you? And we're like, this is what we do. We have everything tracked. Here's all the submittals. Here's all the workflows. Here's all the weather. Well, anyway, they, they chose, they convinced the owner not to use our submittal process. They were going to track everything with emails. It cost them $8 million. Mm-hmm. Because guess what? The city was mm-hmm. totally prepared. They, they could totally defend their claim now. And the general contractor yeah. couldn't. But the old way of doing business, they would have been able to do trickery dickery dock and everybody no, else's right. clock. And like, no, the game is done. We're done playing the game. This is how we're going to roll. We say we're the Uber to the taxi industry because we have disrupted from the subcontractor that's trying to steal the bid all the way to the owner that's trying to. One of our owners went to jail. This was unbelievable. Uh, It's one of the largest hospital builds in the country. The owner, the lawyer brought, he said, hey, you guys have to have my smart plans because this is going to end up in litigation. It was a billion dollar hospital. So we went to all the, because we, had, anyway, <clears throat> we're pretty OCD. <laughs> anyway, we ended up at Capitol Grill with the owner's rep, and he was a young man. He's been in the business. Um, and what the contractor did is they set him in the middle of Capitol Grill with what I called the Tower of Terror. And it was like the significance was just, I mean, slathing off of him. He was just, they, I, I don't use this word lightly, they raped him with significance. They told him about his kids going to the NFL because they watched him, you know, at his high school game. I mean, and I'm sitting here and I'm like, does anybody, do you guys know him forever? They had researched and researched. The martini started flying, Dirty Martini, Harry's Martini, Houdini, I mean, Martini. And I'm sitting here and I'm having a glass of wine and I'm the only woman at the table and I'm thinking... I, can he walk after having five martinis? I mean, I, I I was having I was in shock, really. Well, anyway, after the fifth martini, guess what the question was from all of the general contractor to this young this man? The question was, "Hey, what's the real number? What's the real number?" Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Hang on, I only had one glass of wine because I was like, I got to see what's going on here. What's the real number?" That is not even a conversation. That is, that is, that is out of bounds. That is the flag. That's a personal foul, especially after he's had five martinis and he's been slathered that his kids go in the NFL and that his wife looks like, um, uh, what is that lady's name? I don't know. Fair Fawcett. And I'm, I'm just like, you guys, oh my God. Well, this, this guy, I literally ended up in jail for something that's personal that I'm not going to bring up, but it was so sad to watch. He lost everything he had because this general contractor was going to make their margins. Their green sheet Mm -hmm. was going to be so good. I think it's called a green sheet. I don't remember. It's called something like that. And so I've witnessed all this stuff firsthand. So when I speak about this, I'm not speaking about it as the CEO of a company that's a thing. I'm saying people's lives, people's families, people's what, I mean, one of our friends that we've known for a long time called the other day and he's like, I'm an alcoholic. This this occupation has pushed me to the limits of alcoholism. So, of mm. course, we have been his ally and we've walked him through what I mean, saved his family because that's what's expected in the industry. You have to lie, cheat and steal to get where you're going. And that's enough. Right. Well, that's. <clears throat> Well, that's part of the nature of construction, unfortunately. That is its reputation. But I, I think that 
your kind of service does help not only, I think, uh, raise the bar of behavior, right? Yeah. But, But I think, especially when you're dealing with projects that involve taxpayer money, public projects, right? Yes. I think the public deserves to know yes that its money is being well spent yes right and and i think that that the a product like yours um actually does provide public good yeah and uh, you, you know I, I i agree i understand exactly what you mean that uh in that in your instance that that gentleman being completely demolished because that is the way our business can be sometimes uh, but I also think from a larger civic, like civic minded, broad minded view, yeah. wouldn't it be nice that if you knew that this um, five billion dollar airport was be- that's being funded with federal and state and local taxes was being managed through a third party that was maintaining the integrity of all the dollars? Yes. Like, wouldn't that be wouldn't that in and of itself be refreshing and i have i have on my resume so the air force mandated the corps of engineers for seven years to use my smart plans and this is the posture of the corps of engineers i'm not joking i've been i'm not even going to say the district anyway this was the posture of all the men in the meeting well it's the air force no no that was the corps of engineers the air force was like The Air Force was like, where have you been all my life? Oh, my God. So the Corps of Engineers, it was just this big wave of like, you know, oh, who is she? You know, and I was like, oh, how about we unfold our arms here? Seven years mandated. This project that just finished was three months ahead of schedule. No modifications. Mm -hmm. Zero. Red zone ready (laughs) turned over. I'm in I'm in the picture for the ribbon cutting. Never in the history of the Corps of Engineers. And guess what they said? Oh, you know what? We're able to manipulate our documents. So that's why our projects go over like that. And I'm like, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. I, I mean, there was another project, $400 million of the over budget for a VA hospital. $400 million. How many kids could go to school and get free Good lunch room. with $400 exactly. million? Dollars? Correct. And you know what they do? They still do the ribbon cutting and they still act like, you know, that they did this great civic duty. No, dude, you just put our country out of business. We cannot continue to live like that and do those things over and over again and act like there's a better way because we're the only way. I agree. Yeah. I, I, you've convinced me. I mean, from the moment you and I first started chatting, you may, you may or may not recall, but within like 30 seconds, I got what you did and I saw the value of it because I yeah. I deal with so many records and I know how hard they are yeah. and how easy they are to, uh, for, how hard they are to get and when you need them and B, how easy they can be to potentially manipulate, right? So I immediately, um, I'm a certified fraud examiner as well as a PE and I've done my share of design and fraud examinations and so I know the kind of documents and I know how they can be manipulated. And, yeah. and so uh, I, I, for one, am a big cheerleader of that, of that. And, you know, to the extent that I can, um, you know, help spread the word, I'm, I'm more than happy to do so. I know that, uh, it, you know, again, most of my clients tend to be lawyers. And uh, although the, the ones who, pay those checks are the owners, the ones who actually are living through the problem. So, you know, I see my share of owners uh, too. And I I know that many of them would have uh, like at least be interested in hearing I mean, SoFi Stadium, they had to shut down construction because of something that was going on. And I'm like, you know what? Give me the documents in about 24 hours. I'll tell you exactly who, what, when, and where has gone on. You know what I mean? But I mean, that's taxpayers' money. LA, California needs their money. I mean, well, let's just not burn it up, right? Right. Well, you know, California needs our money. That's for sure. But there was a surplus, and they're not giving it back to the taxpayers, which kind of makes me ticked off. But uh, that said, you're right. Everyone needs to keep as much money in their own pockets as possible. But when they give it to the government, they give it with the understanding that there's a trust. Yes. Right. 
that the government's not going to be profligate with it. And yes. and I, I, and construction has that reputation of just money disappearing. So anything we can do, and I think smart plans, you know, is a is a great place to 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 point it out. Any place we can demonstrate that that the money is being properly spent, yeah, I think that's a huge up, upgrade for the industry. Well, whenever I uh, spoke with the attorneys for Kiwit at the conference, because the general contractor recognizes at least the 18% to their bottom line, um, they looked at me like I was a foreign agent. Uh, there was another big uh, construction company that I introduced myself to, and the guy literally turned his back to me. Yeah. And he's like, I want nothing to do with you. And right. so I made him turn back around. I said, just look me in the eyes for two seconds because I'm going to recall the moment that I met you because you're going to wish you knew me then like you met me now. And I mean, I'm like Warren Buffett. I can add 18 percent to your bottom line at Keywood. Who can I talk to? You know, what I mean, like, who care? Does anybody care? Does anybody care there? Well, right. I care. So I'm going to keep on with my mission. I'm going to keep my feet moving. I'm going to pretend like I'm Patrick Mahomes, even though I can't hold a candle to Patrick Mahomes. But knowing that there's people like you out in the industry that say, you know what, Shelly, I, th I think this is a worthy cause because it is definitely a cause for me. I want the daddies that are missing their children and grandchildren's birthday parties to be at the birthday party without their pager on and without mm -hmm. a drink in their hand because they're afraid they're going to lose their job on Monday because the pavement wasn't poured properly and they whatever, whatever. I'm like, no, no, no. Let's bring that back home and let's reform our industry, which will ultimately reform so much of our country, because now there's a three trillion dollar uh, budget. And I've called Pete Buttigieg. But I mean, I they're asking me to pay like twenty five thousand to get a consultant to go in to have a meeting with him. Exactly. No, I'm right. not going to do that, Pete. I'm going to I'm going to meet you. I'm going to share with you what I've done with the industry and how I can protect our country. And if you're not interested, you're not the guy for the job. I agree. That's all you I shouldn't got to need say. To pay, we shouldn't need to pay $25,000 for access to try yeah. to help the government do better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We shouldn't have to do that. It's not our job. We no. already pay enough. We yeah. already pay enough taxes, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to be on. If I help in the future, I'm happy to do so. I'm a big, I'm a big, uh, you know, I, I, I really uh, enjoyed learning about your project, uh, your product, and I think it has long legs, long legs. Um, and I think it would be, as I said, a really big upgrade for the industry. Okay. Give me, so like to close out, cause I'm not a professional TV person. I'm sure there's like an intro and extra or well, those things, I don't know, but really it's about like sharing the wealth and the knowledge. I mean, share how people get a hold of you because you are an expert in the industry that someone could need you. Oh, sure. Well, <clears throat> um, my last name is spelled K-A-L-A-Y-J-I-A-N. And I'm on LinkedIn at W. Wayne Collation. That's probably the easiest and most universal way of just reaching out randomly to people. Um, but also I'm at, at Secretariat and uh, you can just Google me and you'll find me there. Uh, so that's probably the easiest way to find me. Okay. And when I come to LA to work at the Super Bowl selling t-shirts, I'll look you up. I'm, I'm there. Right. I'm like, I would sell more t-shirts than they can make. You, you know what? I would, uh, I live about 15 miles south of LAX. So I'm, I'm not far. It's, okay. uh, it's an easy, it's an easy drive. And to the extent that you uh, can and uh, you're interested and I live right by the water, I'd love to have you and your, uh, and your whole family, whoever joins you for this, uh, Super Bowl extravaganza. I'd love to have you down, uh, show you around, um, have dinner and, or something and sh share with you my beautiful part of the world because right now I'm looking out my window at Catalina Island with the Pacific blue sky and uh, ocean. And it's a, it's a beautiful sight. So to the extent that you can, I'd love to host you for um, an event when you come here. Okay, I will look you up. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure My talking pleasure. with you, meeting you, and I'm Likewise. sure I will see you again. That'll be awesome. Thanks again. Thank you. Have a good day. And to you. Bye now. Bye bye. Thanks for watching this week's episode, brought to you by My Smart Plans and Courage Coalition. For more information about our guest or other links, please see the description below. We'll see you next week on Rebuilding with Shelley Armado.